Hello and welcome to a short video about measuring the capacity of a capacitor with an oscilloscope. Um, for measuring the capacity of a capacitor with the oscilloscope, we have uh, first to walk through some uh, basics. But um, uh, if you're measuring the capacity of a capacitor with an oscilloscope and a function generator, um, then you also don't need an uh, LCR meter or a multimeter which is capable of measuring the capacitor with the capacitor. So this can came quite useful. For measuring this, I have first uh, we look at this simple circuit, this series uh, of a uh, resistor and a capacitor, and both have the same uh, supply voltage. And here I have the voltage on the capacitor. If we look to this diagram, I have here the uh, voltage uh, on the capacitor over the supply voltage in percent. You can see this here. And here I have my time constant, uh, my time. Okay. Uh, here I have this time constant called tau. And um, I can say that at one tau, the capacitor is charged up 63.2%. This means that it has 63.2% of the supply voltage that I am connecting here, this voltage is 63.2%. If we are looking at uh, this formula here, this formula is, this, uh, is for this uh, diagram, uh, we can say that uh, voltage over time equals the supply voltage multiplied uh, with 1 minus E, e is a nature constant, um, raised by minus uh, T divided by tau. So with this equation, you can calculate uh, every uh, time on your in your diagram. For example, if my supply voltage is 1 volts and my total time constant is uh, 10 milliseconds, and um, I have uh, I want to uh, know the voltage at 10 milliseconds, then I have to fill in, and this equals 0 0.632 volts. Um, 0.632 volts because I have one volt and this is also this 63.2 percent point so you can really calculate every point on this diagram out with this equation and now we are coming to the practical part of measuring the capacity for this we can say tau equals r times c and if we are change this uh, formal then we get a c equals tau divided by r and this is the circuit that I am using for measuring the capacitor, the capacity of a capacitor. Uh, here I have a function generator. Sorry, here I have a function generator, which is uh, generating a square wave, uh, a 100k resistor, and a capacitor with a known non known value. And here I have my connected my oscilloscope. If we are looking to the circuit, you can see. Uh, it here. I have my capacitor, my resistor, this is my function generator. Here you can see my function generator, it is set it now to 1 kilohertz square wave signal. Here you can see now my oscilloscope, I'm using a Tektronix 2230. I'm switching it on and I've connected uh, to the first channel the uh, probe which is connected to the capacitor and on the other side to ground. So let's start up. Okay, there we have it. So now I'm switching on uh, the function generator first. So you can see the square wave it's coming out from the function generator. And you can see first a bit the rising of the capacitor, the jerking of the capacitor. So first, for the first adjustment, I'm removing the capacitor and uh, now I adjust my oscilloscope to the following things most following thing uh, most of the oscilloscopes um, of the analog digital oscilloscopes have um, has this uh, markers here this 190 percent marker and uh, down here we have a zero and a 10 percent marker so for measuring this this can ca came really useful if I am adjusting with the variable vertical adjustment so I'm adjusting it 
down to exactly this zero and one hundred percent point. Okay, uh, moving it up a bit. Okay, and uh, now I have I am e e exactly at a zero percent and at one hundred percent. Okay. Um, now at the next, this scope has also, if, if it is in the a variable voltage mode, then it has here, uh, th for the cursors here, I have two cursors, and um, I can see the percentage from this point to this. So I'm finally adjusted a bit better to exactly 100%. So now we have exactly 100%. Okay. Now I'm connecting my capacitor to the circuit. Here, now you can see it is connected. But if I want to see it a bit better, uh, first I'm putting my trigger level to the middle of the screen. Here I'm triggering now in the middle, and uh, I turn up the time base. the maximum possible point yes so turn it really turn it up to the maximum possible that you get the most accurate reading and now I'm setting my first cursor here to this zero point here so and the second cursor I'm setting to 63.2 percent so look here I'm setting it to 63.2 percent and I'm saving the waveform that it is not moving because of the noise so exactly 63.2 percent and now we need to know the time between these two points uh, and this is um, 11.55 microseconds you can zoom in a bit more if you want then you can uh, as measure it uh, much better than so but it is it is now good enough for this explanation. So now let's put that into the calculator and see what we get. So now I have to put these two values into my equation. 11.55 microseconds divided by 100 K ohms. So now I'm putting this into my calculator and there we go. Um, 115 picofarad. Our capacitor has 100 picofarad. You can see 100 picofarad and let's check this with a multimeter yes yes um, we are getting the right reading okay now I'm showing you how you can do this measurement if you have an normal analog oscilloscope which has no digital storage in capability and also no second time base that you don't can uh, put this point in the middle of your screen um, for this I'm going into analog mode and I'm putting it down like so so in, in analog mode with no timestamp magnification or no second time base it is uh, not really accurate if you are measuring the voltage in this way okay um, so you uh, turn up your time base and then you have to turn up also the frequency of your function generator this is the problem by this if you need uh, for a low capacity really low capacitor you need a higher frequency function generator not just audio frequency function generator and now you also can measure this arise time but not so accurate but accurate enough yes you can not uh, see really just the edge because you have just one period I, I can change the trigger slope if I want and now I can also put it more up a bit so like like so and now I'm also showing you how to can uh, how you can measure this rise time if you have an oscilloscope which has uh, a capability of a dual time base measurement um, and this goes the following way for this I am putting my function generator back to 1 kilohertz yes and um, now I am going down so for this uh, I am 
going to the point where the last point where I'm seeing this rising edge here. This this is also this is the last point where I'm seeing it uh, good. And now I'm making this a bit smaller and I'm putting it up here and I say dual time base mode. Now I can adjust here the point where the second time base is and here I can adjust also where I want to be. Um, now I'm pulling my time base knob and turning it up and up and up and then I can search for this um, so it is better for this point and zoom it right in and put it uh, here to the middle position and then I can zoom in a bit more and here we have it and now I also can zoom it in more and do the same measurement like on the analog uh, like in the digital mode now just with the, with the dual time base scope so if you are have a dual time base scope you can do this measurement also really well and now I'm showing you another way uh, how you can do this measurement uh, and in this way we're looking at this circuit like a, a low pass filter so we have here the output and the input and uh, the tau is also calculated by r times c and the omega is calculated by 2 times pi times f and so we can say f cut off is equals 1 divided by 2 times pi times r times c and so we can calculate the c by 1 divided by 2 times r times f cut off. The cut off frequency means that um, a signal is put down by 2 dB and 2 dB means that the uh, value of the signal is multiplied by 0 0.707 and this means for example that um, when the voltage uh, on the input is 1 volt then the output voltage is at 0 0.707 volts and let's try this okay here we're back on the scope I've changed nothing on the circuit and uh, now I'm feeding in a sine wave you can see it here I'm feeding in a sine wave um, I'm, f I'm, I'm se selecting it to say 2 volts peak to peak, yes 2 volts peak to peak is a good value so here now we have exactly 2 volts peak to peak and um, now I can use a second channel or uh, and, and connect to the first channel the function generator and to the second channel the capacitor or I also can uh, save the waveform uh, here as a reference waveform okay now I have saved this uh, waveform and um, now let's go to the waveform and um, one cursor I'm putting to zero volts the other cursor I'm putting to the top about two volts and uh, about one volts and on the um, cutoff frequency we have uh, 0.707 volts so I go to 0.707 so um, not exactly but okay and um, now I take my function generator and I'm putting the frequency up until it reaches at this point more and go down with the time base that I can see better where it reaches the point and there we have it exactly uh, my 707 point and, and now I turn up the time base so, and uh, now I'm going to as measure the frequency of this signal. So let's go out of this and um, there. Okay, now I go uh, into the menu, display menu, uh, and there we have it. Okay. And here you can see we have a frequency of 14.02 um, kilohertz. So now let's put that values into our equation. We get a frequent uh, a, a result of 100 and 
13 picofarads. So that's it for my video about uh, how to calculate a capacity of a capacitor with a uh, oscilloscope. I hope you find it useful and thanks for watching.